Hi, I'm Joe with Inductive Auto, and I'm here today with our all-new EM61 wiring kit. Now, the EM61 is found in Gen 1 Nissan LEAF, and it's a great motor for EV conversions. One of the challenges, though, is that the LEAF wiring harness is short and really limits where you can place your motor inverter, and we've solved that problem. Our unique system of CNC machine plates, core grips, and standard 2 aught wire allows you to locate your motor and inverter anywhere out in your build for maximum flexibility. In this video, I'll go over what's included with the kit and how to get it installed on your project. Here's everything that's included with the kit. Motor side cord grip plate, the inverter AC cord grip plate, the inverter DC cord grip plate for your battery input power, three O-rings for the plates, eight cord grips, one cable log isolator, seven M8 16 millimeter long bolts, five M8 12 millimeter long bolts, and four M6 16 millimeter long bolts. All right, we have our motor inverter up here on the bench. Let's get started. First step is to remove this access cover on the back of the motor. There's 17 10 millimeter bolts in here, as well as sometimes a 13 millimeter grounding screw. In addition to the bolts, there's also two pins which locate the cover. These sometimes get corroded and can make the cover stick. Nissan provides these two tabs to pry your rubber cover off if it gets stuck. This one's pretty loose since we've had it off a few times. This is what the back of the motor looks like. These are the three phases going into the motor, and this is where we'll connect our main three phases from the inverter. It's a good opportunity to show you how the lug isolation block works. It goes in here, provides threads to screw your lugs into, as well as keep the lugs isolated. Next step is to place this in place, and then we'll move on. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is install our O-rings into the back of our cord grip plates. Two different size O-rings for the two different size plates. Take your plate and press the O-ring firmly into place. The O-ring groove is intentionally larger than the O-ring, so it has room to expand when you clamp it down. This is what provides the water and dust tight seal. You want this to stick in place so that it's easier later down the road. Once you get it all pressed in, do a quick shake test, make sure it stays, and then repeat with the other two plates. All right, the next step is to install our inverter side plate. Make sure the words are facing up when you're looking at the inverter from the top down in the outside in the orientation we have here shown. That'll make sure that your phases are correctly matched to the inverter and the motor side. Install this plate with two of the M6 bolts. Then tighten them down with a 10 millimeter socket. Next, we'll move the access cover and the size of the inverter with a 10 millimeter socket. The next step is to terminate our two out wire that go from the inverter to the motor. You want three equal length runs, and any off the shelf two out will work. We're gonna go over to Dennis to give us a quick demonstration of how to crimp the lugs onto the wire. We are terminating the two watt harness between the motor and the inverter. Um, we're gonna crimp this two watt lug with the 5 16 um, through hole and we're going to install our cord grip. It's important to remember to install the cord grip prior to crimping the lug on, and even before you uh, crimp back the insulation for the lug. So to do this we disassemble the cord grip, slide the cord grip top, the seal, and the body over the cable and you can just slide them up and out of the way. Then you want to measure your cutback and remove just enough insulation trying not to cut into the copper strands of your 2 watt cable. Should look like that and then basically apply your 2 watt lug Slide it on there, should be a nice tight fit. And we're using a 50 millimeter crimp in our hydraulic crimp tool. Once you have the lug crimped on nicely, you want to apply some um, adhesive sealing heat shrink. You basically just want to make sure to cover that gap between the lug and the insulation on the cable.
Once you have your heat shrink applied, you can basically just move your cord grip body, seal, and cord grip top back in a position, and you want to leave them like this until installing them on the inverter or the motor. All right, now that our wires are terminated, we're ready to install them onto the motor side and inverter. On one side of your wires, you'll want to bend your logs at a 90 degree angle. These are the ones that'll land onto the log isolation block. We're going to start by installing our wires onto the motor side. The exact sequence here isn't super important, but this is the procedure that I like to do that makes it the easiest. Now the bent log side is going to be for the motor side, and I like to start by sliding the top of the cord grip, the cord grip seal, and the cord grip body a good ways up the wire to give myself some working room. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the wire through the cord grip plate. Then I'm going to screw the cord grip body into the plate. Snug it up with a wrench to get a good seal. After that, I'm going to do the other two before proceeding to the next step. Next, I'm going to even them all up, make sure the logs are facing down, and install the cord grip onto the motor. What you're going to do is slide them in here like this, and these logs are going to go on top of the motor side logs. If you need to, you can slide the cord grip plate a decent way down to give yourself some extra working room. I like to land these logs one at a time and put a bolt in loosely before I move to the next one. The hard rail used for these are the M8 by 16 millimeter bolts. They're the gold ones. All right, once all the lugs are landed and they're still loose, now I'm gonna start the cord grip plate onto the motor. Just slide it down. Make sure your O-ring is still in place. Line up the holes and use the remaining four M8 by 16 millimeter gold bolts. I like to leave these loose at first until I have everything all lined up, then I'll snug them down. Once these are tight, you shouldn't see any gap between the plate and the motor. The O-ring will be completely compressed. All right, the final step over here is to torque these three bolts down to 80 inch pounds. It's important not to over torque these bolts because you could strip out the threads. All right, after that, we'll put our motor side cover plate back on. The last step on the motor side is to fully assemble our cord grips. First, you want to si slide the rubber seal down. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes with this larger wire. Wheel it around to get it firmly in place in the cord grip. Kind of get it nice and snug in there and then install the cord grip top. Screw this on, use the wrench to snug it down. Then repeat that step on the other three cord grips. All right, and that wraps it up on the motor side. All right, next step, we'll install the wires into the inverter side. The process is largely the same as on the motor side, although a decent bit simpler. As you install your wires, you want to make sure you match the phases. Both the motor and inverter side have UVW labeled, and it's very important that you match those wires up correctly. Just like before, I'll slide my cord grid up a ways to give me some space. Insert the wire in there so the lug lands on the landing pad. And then we're going to use the three shorter M8 bolts, the silver ones, to install these in. These use a 12 millimeter socket. If you do end up dropping a bolt inside the inverter, it's not the end of the world. A magnet is an easy way to get it out of there. All right, and then just like before, we'll install our cord grips into the plate. Slide down our seals. And finally, the top of the cord grip. And the last step, just like before, is to torque these down to 80 inch pounds. 
Then we'll reinstall the cover and we're all set. And that's the power wiring between the motor inverter and the AM61 wiring kit. The only plate we didn't cover is the battery input wiring plate. It's installed exactly the same way as the other two and uses the same torque specs. This kit's available exactly how you saw it, as well as in other variations that include the motor and a lot of other accessories to get your project rolling faster. If you have any questions about this or any of our other products, feel free to reach out at inquiry at inductiveauto.com.